it looks pretty good. Oh yeah, my God. Side. Hey there, I guess. Well, hello there. It's Bob with uh, Odin's Lock. Just wanted to keep moving along, trying to clean up my step van, uh, run into some issues, trying to sort through some stuff. Let me turn some lights on. Got a little ambiance finally. Ambiance. I can get it going. Let me see here. Here we go. There we go. Hey. Anyways, uh, here, let me turn this light out. I like that. I like this light. Anyways, yeah. So I got set up here. Uh, today I just kind of just going through some of my locks. You know, if you do any amount of uh, institutional locksmithing, let me close this door over here so the cat don't bother me. Any amount of institutional locksmithing, or say in an industrial factory office building type uh, setup, uh, I know universities go through it a lot. Most of them use master key type uh, locks, you know, Medico, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, I just, this is stuff that I've gathered working in a factory a few years back. I uh, worked at one of the, the Harley plants that used to be here before they closed it down. And uh, we've come across a lot of these wafer locks, different types, different engineers, different uh, office people would order different brand desks. So you kind of wind up with a hodgepodge of uh, different types. Uh, you'll come across, uh, they'll have different... Uh, some of them don't have any numbers. Some of them will have a serial number. Uh, you know, they have different ends on them. Some of them are master keyed. Some of them aren't. Uh, you'll have come across all kinds, you know, basically. And uh, you'll have to figure out how to get them apart. I knew some guys that they would just go straight to drill and they didn't mess with it. And they, uh, you know, they just start drilling. And uh, I never had to drill one of these. Uh, I don't think I ever did. Uh, I might have had a lock or two that might have been, it was actually broke. You know, the, the linkage in back was messed up or something, or you couldn't get to the retaining wafer. Uh, but, you know, you'll, you'll see these. And nowadays, we have code software. You can look it up on, on a computer, like Framen uh, has uh, their own uh, Framen, uh, I don't remember what you call it, uh, generic code. And then HPC has theirs, a key trail or a... Uh, Oh, uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but uh, they have their own version of it, too. On my key trail, it's, uh, uh, I can't even remember what you call it. But anyways, I have uh, several different software systems uh, set up that I, I could use. But uh, what I really need to talk about is, uh, let me see, and these here actually tell you what they go to. There's one in particular that you run across that when you're looking into the keyway, and sure, you'll have uh, like a, you know, this is a P101, uh, 101. Uh, you know, there's a Pundra, there's a, a few others out there, but one that I come across that was kind of hard to figure out with key wise because uh, some of these uh, they may have a uh, five wafers. You know, this is a Technion, five wafers. Some of them would have a, uh, you know, several more in a double, double bit keys. That it's cuts on both sides. See the focus. You now and there's a P101, which I believe that it was a P101. Yep. And so you'll find that you'll come across this. Sure, you can impression. It gets to be kind of hard because sometimes uh, when you have a double bit lock and you're trying to impression, uh, you know, it's for me. You know, I can impression the wave lock just like anyone else. I mean, it's not that complicated. But uh, when you get to where you're cutting my code, so they just call you, you know, and you, you're you already near your machine, your computer and the machine. And, and I have death and spacer keys set up at that place. They didn't have a, a fancy code cutters. Uh, they did uh, have an exact, uh, Ilco Exacta, Kabob, Exacta Punch, I believe it was called, a little, little orange or red uh, punch. But we had it set up for interchangeable cores. We didn't mess with... Uh, you know, residential, and, and we didn't have any dies or uh, anything set up for uh, desk locks. And so, anyways, I used to use my nippers. You know, I could let me see if I got it right here. I have my nippers. I have calipers I used uh, to get some of them. I don't even see. Sorry, I don't. I didn't really have anything planned out for this. 
Now I gotta think of my nippers in that camera. I'm not even gonna look for right now, but but uh, what I would do, you know, I would try to impression ease, and I'd get lucky occasionally. You look at that; there's not a whole lot to that. I mean, you know, granted, it's pushing up the wafer. You know, if you don't have a rye, you're you're crushing a wafer. Uh, sometimes you come across, you know, you had these. Uh, these are master keys for uh, wafer locks. You know, and I highlighted. So it's like a CK300, uh, each one kind of had their own. It's a PCKS for the P-Series locks, some of them. Um, Wesco uh, locks, this uh, I think is a, what is that, a CK300 also. And you had a, I'm not even sure what that one was, that went to a different door. But you know, you got different types. Some of these pretty uh, weird looking, uh, I think it's a, yeah. PCK. Anyways, you know, these are great for most Technions, uh, Pundra, some of those. Uh, you can come up with these. Uh, you can buy them from factories. In fact, uh, you know, Easy Keys uh, makes them, you know. Most of these things nowadays, you know, it's like I, if I have a, an office building calls and says they have a bunch of locks to do, sure, yeah, I'm going to go out there and do it. Not a problem. Uh, if it's complicated, like it's a weird key keyway that I don't have. Then uh, I might, you know, uh, go down to my local supplier. If it becomes really complicated and I can't determine what it is, I'll get on Easy Keys website. And then I'll go on ahead and uh, go through their little database or library. Sometimes I even talk to them. They they have no problem working with locksmiths. You know, they they're there for anybody. You know, in locksmiths, you know, sometimes you can buy uh, an actual hardware from them. Uh, you can buy the linkage, uh, some of the different things. Uh, most of the stuff is uh, plain Jane. Uh, you know, you can find a lot of this stuff anywhere. I keep these. Sometimes if I need, like, if I need to keep it within a series, I'll go on ahead and I'll just go ahead and make a key for this. I don't think I have a key for right now, but if it's the only thing I have that'll work, that'll fit what they got in their system, I'll make a key for that. And uh, and they know. I mean, I, I don't upsell used stuff. Here's a, here's a crypto desk. Uh, I think Stanley makes them, maybe. A uh, crypto cabinet. It's so the H number, and that's a, those are kind of crazy too. It's a, like a profile type key. Profile, uh, you have to get the right one, then you shave off what you don't need on the key. And you can't, I've tried to make these uh, kind of complicated. Uh, and you know, airlocks must come across weird things. Uh, these, uh, this is a Seagate, aka Vidmar. Vidmar is kind of the same thing. That's a, uh, they use a lot of these on uh, cabinets at uh, where I worked at the Harley plant. And uh, you know, that's the type of lock you would go into. I don't even, I've got the key to this somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. But what I really wanted to go over was uh, the uh, the P series. When we get into this, if it's not a Pundra, like a five uh, five wafer lock, let me see here if I can find one. If you, if you get into the P series where it's this is a Technion, you'll find some that are not a five wafer. And so I'm showing you this. I'll just see if I can uh, put it on uh, the video itself but uh, this here is a KI Industries uh, aka Kruger International I talked to uh, Daniel Pierre uh, I had to find him on LinkedIn and Bob Seath King Bob's a great guy uh, he also does uh, books he, may, he writes books this is one of his right here and uh, Robert Seath King and uh, you know you can get their information uh, they have it on uh, LinkedIn this one here, you know, and they, I contacted them uh, a few years back trying to figure out the, the info on these uh, KI industry locks. And so here's uh, what they go through. You'll see locks like this. Uh, here's uh, different profiles. They even have regular keys on some of them. And then you got this style here. And uh, that's some of the profiles they have, how they look, uh, front and back. This is off uh, KI Industry, or uh, longlifelocks.ca. It's Canadian. Uh, good outfit. And, uh, you know, uh, it's very important. You know, they talk about the side A, side B. You know, what you do, uh, how you do your depths and spaces. And uh, this book here that Bob has, uh, Robert, Steve King, they have, uh, this covers everything. I mean, you go through... Uh, this is just reading locks, and it's pretty hard on some of these, but it doesn't cover the KI Industries or Kruger, you know, for that matter, from every look at, but it does cover all these. 
And so it's a great book. And you, I don't know if they still sell them online or what, but uh, I mean, there's your index, you know, with all the stuff on here. And it goes in chapters, really, but this is if you want to look at look up a specific one. You see, they have uh, the FR uh, Master and Removal Key, and it tells you how to make them. The problem is, you got to have the right key length. So, I mean, it's going to be a locksmith only type deal, or someone that works in the industry. You know, if you work in an office building and you uh, do this kind of stuff occasionally. These are great books. I don't do any automotive, but uh, occasionally I might come across an old Ford lock or something. I just want to play around, figure out how they work. Uh, they're not that complicated, but, you know, if it's something I don't normally see a whole lot of, it it can throw me for a loop, you know, especially if you've got like a Ford uh, 8 cut. Which placement of the wafers does it go? And so, you know, and then you got a book like this, and I've already covered this, and I think that book there in different, uh, there's the Illinois right there. Uh, American small pen, but this uh, this book here is a wonderful book, HPC, and I don't uh, think they make it anymore. Uh, you can get some of the stuff straight, you know. It's I think in their code source uh, software, I think that's HPC code source. That's actually what it's called. I was trying to think of that earlier. That has that, but uh, you know, when you get into wafer locks, uh, there's a wafer lock reading. There's advanced wafer level lock reading. This tool here is great for popping out the wafers. Uh, I got this. It's a great tool. You know, you'll come up with different lock uh, wafer kits. Uh, yeah, actually, this is a uh, people don't realize you can repin uh, tubular locks. And I have a occasion I get across some of those. I've never repin one because it's like one of those things you'll never really do. And I'd say tubular, it's like this. You can repin those. I'm sure, you can. And uh, it's just almost not worth it though, because the locks are pretty cheap. You can buy them on eBay, and then you can even have them already made, uh, keyed the way you want them. You know, uh, you can buy them through your local locksmith supplier, which is who I would recommend, because they usually have them right there in stock, and uh, you know they'll have uh, everything you need. Yeah, and I have uh, some of these actually have the master links in it too. I don't know which one this one here is. Uh, you'll find some of these. They'll have the, the master links. Uh, and people, a lot of people don't realize you can uh, master key weight blocks. It's just uh, there's certain ways you do it. You know, I'm not, not going to go through it all on here. I actually had some good on universal way for kids. But uh, I keep a uh, generic assortment of what I need. Uh, I, there's like some Technions I have, 65s. I'm going to show you Technion. I'll keep like it. You can buy different cam locks and this kind of stuff. Most of this video is about the... Uh, Okay, industries. Here's another interesting thing I'll show you real quick. Um, add it. It's a slam lock, self-locking. You use the key to unlock it, but you don't have, you can take the key out and, uh, the key so actually it'll, you can slam the lock, slam the door shut, and it'll stay locked that way. So, anyways, I don't know how you need to get off on a crazy tangent, but I did want to talk to you about some of these. If you do any of this kind of stuff, and I, not just like as a locksmith, but if you work in an office building and you wind up changing out a lot of desk locks, you'll want to keep your assortments. If you take them out, uh, you know, wind up, uh, write the numbers down. So I always tell you, someone had to drill that out. I was going to say that because I might need to tell people. I always tell uh, the other mechanics, you know, I worked at because I was the only real locksmith out there, that if you're going to take them out, at least, you know, in... Whenever we get new desks, if I see a number, I try to get a number off the key, see, you know, so I can record the bidding, save the bidding, save myself from future headache. I even had a form that I uh, created that uh, was basically, uh, you know, if you uh, want us to be able to open your desk up for you, then you need to have that, your information stored with us. And uh, it was fairly successful. A lot of the people did do that with us. You know, they, they, it's in our main department. I had key boxes like this over here. Where I would keep uh, copies of their keys uh, if I ever had to make any, or uh, you know I had a database where uh, I had that stuff, so uh, saved. But anyways, I just kind of want to go over this. Uh, no big deal. I want to share that information if you do any of this kind of stuff. A lot of locksmiths, you know, if they're commercial, residential, and automotive, uh, sometimes you don't get into the real nitpicky stuff, you know, with desk locks. I mean, sure, they're easy to pick, but if you just want to make a key for them, some of them are kind of complicated, and and I haven't got into the high security ones. No, these are high security. Uh, I do have some that I uh, don't have them on here. List of cabinets. These get a little bit more complicated. Uh, they're easy to pick, 
but uh, you know you have to have the the numbers off the actual lock themselves to be able to make a key for them. And there's a list of key blank. It's not even the right key. I have it blank, but uh, let's try not to let it roll away. But, but uh, sometimes you have to get these open, and they'll have a serial number on the the lock itself on this piece. You gotta take it out. I don't know if, uh, yeah, here it is. Here's serial number for that one right there. And so you can look it up, find it, or you can get you a, a key blank that fits, and then. Uh, Shave it down, per however high the the pin stack is, and then the uh, plug. But uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, sorry. I uh, hope I didn't bore you too much. I just I just going through stuff, and I thought, you know, I think I'll go ahead and do one on that Ki Industries one, real quick. Uh, that's a great website. If you can go to that, check them out. They uh, they have uh, all the office cabinets, all the equipment, all that stuff. Uh, they have all that stuff. You know. Uh, the pictures, they, you can even buy the hardware from them. Uh, they're a great company. And uh, Seth Peer or Daniel Peer, uh, let me see, uh, Robert, uh, Steve King, and uh, Daniel Peer. Actually, I used to go with Seth Peer, who I used to talk to. But, uh, anyways, maybe it's the same person. It goes by two different names. I don't know, but Dave's all, he was always good to me. I remember I had to talk to him. Well, now, thanks. Thank you for watching. Uh, Sorry, I didn't really plan this out that well. And uh, if you have any uh, information you want to share about uh, this kind of stuff, ideas, topics, tools, uh, you want to get into anything specific like the breakdowns of the Technions, uh, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to share some of that stuff. I, I have to change some of these occasionally. I uh, had a place here recently where uh, it had broke out and I had to buy the whole shell and everything. And, and luckily my local lock supplier actually had them brought in the cabinet. That's to an old vending machine right there. Those little uh, gumball machines. But, uh, I always try to save this stuff. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye bye. But when a plan comes together. That's all, folks.